Let's jump to the wall here, and today we're doing another Rate Your Doomstack video. Uh, this time covering Thorgrim Grudgebearer's Hammerer's Doomstack. Now, we actually covered a Hammerer's Doomstack uh, in Warhammer 2, but the Hammerers have changed a little bit. And also, we're using a new system. If you didn't watch the previous video, that's the 18 Skink Chiefs, I'd highly recommend you go back and watch that, even just to watch the end, because we're using a new rating system, which I think is better. Um, you let me know in the comments whether you agree or disagree about how to rate these. So, what have we got here? Um, it's not full hammerers. Um, we've got you know, three quarters of, uh, no, no, two thirds of the army is hammerers. Um, a flame cannon and quite a lot of heroes here. So, engineer, three runesmiths, and thanes. So, these guys here are all supposed, are supposed to provide some support for the hammerers here, obviously. Okay, so, what are we going up against? We're going up against the war host of the apocalypse. They have essentially two full stack armies. A lot of Chosen over here, but... Oh, Settlement Garrison, that'd be why. Um, and, well, we can get an Order Resolve win. That is not a great win. Um, although none of them get wiped out, so I guess that's actually not too bad. Um, let's just jump in here and see how it goes. Now, this will be a good or bad Doomstack, depending on how well it performs on the battlefield, well, like in terms of results. If I end up getting a Pyrrhic victory, then is it really a good... Just ask, uh, good um, doom stack if I could just auto resolve and get the win, or only auto resolve and get the win. So I'm going to be aiming for at least a close victory because sometimes the difference between close victory and decisive victory is it's wonky. Main thing is just not to get a pyrrhic victory and not to get any units wiped out. Now I reckon going up against the Warriors of Chaos with something like this is relatively easy because of the lack of missile units that they'll have. Because that's where these units here are going to suffer the most from, because they don't have shields. Um, because what will end up happening is that they'll focus fire on one unit specifically and wipe it out. Whereas if you've got a melee focused situation, that probably isn't going to happen. Now, what I'm going to do here with the flame cannon, I'm just going to immediately withdraw it from the battlefield. I think it's in here only to be a siege attacker. And... Uh, okay, we, so the problem here is that we got them coming in from the rear and... In the, this is not ranked as a disaster battle, right? If it was a disaster battle, I'd park myself over here and just bomb them and, and whatnot. But what I want to do instead is, you know, put this army to the test. I want to charge at the first army and then hopefully have beaten them by the time the second army shows up. And that means not having them show up at all. So that one shows up in a minute 20. Okay. I think that also means that the force over here is relatively small. Okay, so just get rid of this, and let's get going. Just rush at them. Because like I said before, we want to be relying as much on the hammerers as possible, and as little on, like, gimmicky stuff as possible, like using Rune of Wrath and Ruin and just bombing the enemy army. Because then it's not really a hammer or doom stack, is it? This is an ability from the Engineer, which all of your armies should have Engineers, so that's fine, we'll use that. Oh, uh, you went with the Shotgun? Um, I don't agree with that. I think you should have gone longer range with them. Some people swear by the, uh, the Shoddy. I don't. I don't like it. I like the long range. So therefore, this, this is army is trash. No, I'm just kidding. So, with lots of spell resistance, that's not really doing anything. Not even worth using a wound of negation on, on that for Spirit Leech. Yeah, as if those Chaos Warhounds are going to do anything. Okay, let's put down a rune of speed for damage. I really like the Rune of Speed because it's area of effect. You can hit more than one unit with it. As opposed to Rune of Negation, which only affects one unit at a time. Probably went a little bit too wide here. By the time I've gotten around them to flank, <laughs> the battle's freaking over here. So let's have a look at the physical resistance on them. 25%. 
Yep. All right, here comes Archeon. Stains in there as well. And I think I got another rune of speed. Okay, don't worry about chasing them off. Get over here. We need to get back into a reasonable formation. Try to dodge the Searing Doom as much as possible, but it doesn't matter that much if we get hit. I tell you what though, this feels a lot better than it did in Warhammer 3. Oh, sorry, Warhammer 2. God damn, this looks it. In Warhammer 2, when I was sent in this similar sort of doomstack, I was like, man, this is a piece of shit. But, uh, you know, that took out Archeon really easily. It's those magical weapons on the hammer is really he helping here. Because he would have had a lot of physical resistance. So, a bit of damage done. Can't really do anything to heal them. As far as I'm aware. Hook those dwarf and legs! Kazook! It is a reckoning! Uh, let them get organized and then I'll just charge in them again. Let's see how that goes. Go through! For the Kara's Encore! Hook those dwarf and legs! So yeah, the kind of runes I like are the ones that um, affect multiple units. So yeah, really big fan of the rune of speed. Especially on dwarfs, because that's 45% extra speed is really handy. Uh, rune of slowness is okay. Don't mind that. Uh, rune of wrath and ruin is actually a lot better in Warhammer 3 than it was in 2. Rune of earth and steel is trash. Uh, rune of negation is good if we had a single entity doom stack. So since we don't have that, I don't really care. And rune of breaking I don't really care about because it only affects one unit. Alright, the bounce of power is not in our favor at the moment. These guys got iron wooden tankers? Yep. Yeah, just let them come at us. This is why I got rid of the, uh, uh, the uh, what's it called? The flame cannon, just because um, I didn't want it getting hit and flanked or whatever. That way we can use our melee infantry held yes, especially. Lucky. But at the same time, I totally recognize the reason it's there for is for sieges. So I'm not dropping off any points for that. War of vengeance! The runes glow! War of vengeance! Move to attack! I don't think they're doing much. Just brace rather than counter charge. And then. For the ancestors! Rune of speed. Hey. Yes! Yes! The clans unite! And counter charge against the enemy that have Hammer particularly it. low speed. No! Kill Urks! My guys are doing fine over there. This flank over here looks like it use the most help. That's what I'm gonna send Thorgrim. For the Karas Encore! Let the vengeance begin! Strike out! Cash room! Obey me! Yeah! Let me get my tools! Good. Have Some issues them. here. Hammer us! Down! Vengeance! Kill her! Another good thing about the um, the runesmiths is that it shows you on the unit cards when your spells are available. That would be really good for other laws of magic if you could actually see when the spells are ready to go rather than constantly having to check. Alright, this one over here is taking a fair bit of damage. May have to pull it out soon. 
Uh, that's a bit of a problem, except that they hit their own troops with it. <laughs> okay. I didn't cast that. Oh, no. It's, it's, uh, no, stop. Stop. I think it's about to stop. Uh, that's okay. Good thing we've got magic. They, I reckon they hurt their own units more. By the gears of okay, I noticed that the music has stopped. Okay, just, yeah, just wait for the uh, the rune of uh, speed to kick in again. All right, we got we got a few units here that are really badly damaged, but I can't pull them out just yet. For the High King, they're both over here. Yeah, they're just not ready to pull out just yet. For the Kalidan Corps, I'll have that. Yes. Okay, I, I got to pull them out, or else they're going to get wiped out. Which would make it uh, have been pointless to have fought them manually if a unit gets wiped out. Okay, here we go. Here's a run of speed. Pop that down. Wait, this one. Okay, looks like we might just be able to pull them out there. Okay, we are a little bit iffy here on this flank. I need some more support. Okay, these two here are done. Let's, um... Oh, there's the army losses. Okay. Well, I'm not sure whether or not this is going to be a close victory or pure victory. We've definitely taken some damage. But, they, you know, they managed to win. Let's see what happens. Close victory. Okay, so it did better than order resolve. Maybe just slightly. Because, yeah, some of those units definitely took some damage. But they, you know, went up against Chosen and smashed them. Plus, they went up against stuff that they really shouldn't be that good against, like uh, Chaos Giants and Trolls. That's not really what these guys here are for, because both of those units don't have that much armor, except for Armored Chaos Trolls. And they all got pretty decent kills. So we definitely could have taken on more, but it, yeah, we were taking casualties. With no ability to heal them, it's a bit of a problem. So looking at the damage output, 22,000. Yeah, this is pretty good damage output. Again, another thing with this enemy that we've gone up against here is that they lack missile units and artillery, and that's something that I imagine this would be fairly weak against. Just because of how slow they are. Right, none of this stuff here matters. Just get to the, the end turn so we can have a look at the the army. Let's see what's going on with it. And then we use the new system to uh, determine how good it is. Alright, so. It's thematic for sure because as the High King he provides um, physical resistance plus 15% for hammer units, which is pretty damn decent. And I think over here, yep, that's where they get an another 10%. And um, does he get any additional bonuses outside of that? I don't, no, I don't think so. But yeah, even just the 15% physical resistance is pretty good. That way the, um, the hammerers are only really weak against... Uh, oh god, that one's going to attrition itself to death. That's okay, you just put up here for testing. Um, only has to worry about... Lots of magical weapons. So against demons, got to be a little bit concerned. But that being said, demons also be wary of hammerers. So if you were going up against demons, you'd probably mostly have to worry about soul grinders, especially of Nurgle or Zinch. The corn ones aren't too bad, and the slash ones don't have a missile attack. I think those would be the kind of units you have to worry about the most. But in all honesty, in Immortal Empires, you're not going to encounter that kind of stuff very often. Okay, so rating this. Let's start with practicality. This is like reasonably practical to make. Uh, it's, it's not super difficult. He's only got one master engineer. Getting runesmiths is not difficult. Getting two thanes not too difficult. A flame cannon not too difficult. You know, these are sort of high tier units, but for a sort of high tier sort of doom stack, it's it's medium sort of practicality. Not not the uh, not the highest, not the lowest. Um, in terms of strength, again, it's kind of medium strength. We took out two full stacks, we took a bit of damage, 
we've seen stronger armies out there. In terms of ease of use, you know, you've got a lot of abilities there. Um, so you could definitely fumble on that a fair bit. It's not a case of just click and forget. So again, sort of medium difficulty. It's not super micro-intensive, but it's also not completely brainless. You do have to switch yourself on a little bit in order to use it. So in pretty much all three marks, it's kind of a mid kind of doom stack. In terms of a number rating, we're not doing that anymore. You know, that's up to you what you want to rate it. But this is sort of a, you know, sort of a medium sort of doomsday. It's very thematic with Thorgrim. It's not overly expensive considering there are 12 supply lines. It's not, not the cheapest thing ever. Um, but for Warhammer 3, you know, this will hand you victory in most siege battles and minor city battles. You just got to watch out for particular units that are fast missile magic units that are armor piercing, which there's not that many of them in the game. But if you do encounter them, that's going to be a big problem for you, especially with inability for healing and also relatively low replenishment rates. But apart from that, it's an okay doom stack. Not great, not complete trash. Um, seen better, seen worse. At least it's not completely full of heroes, so you got to give it credit for that. Anyway, that's the end of this one here, guys. Let me know in the comments below what you think of this Doom Stack in terms of those ratings, how practical, how easy it is to use, and also how strong it is. Anyway, that's the end of this one. Appreciate you, and I'll see you next time, fuckers. Bye.